there. So if you clicked on this video, that means you probably want to learn how to make files like this or this. My following videos will focus on specific topics and go more in depth. If this is something that interests you, hit the subscribe button below and hit the little bell to turn on notifications. I'm going to show you my process for creating an SVG inside of Adobe Illustrator. Now I've just grabbed a bunny that I found online, but if you want to create um, an actual like custom SVG, you can rough sketch something on paper, um, on your iPad and bring it over here. And when I say rough sketch, it can be rough and messy. How I would start doing this is I would grab the bunny. I'm going to create a new layer by hitting this little post-it down here. I call it the post-it. I'm going to lock my first layer just so nothing on it can get moved by accident. And then I'm just going to zoom in a bit. I'm going to hit P on my keyboard for the pen tool, which can also be found right here. And I'm just going to start dropping some anchor points. And as you get more familiar with Illustrator, you will... Oh, let me turn my fill off so I can see what I'm doing. Let me set a stroke. I'm going to set my stroke to black. You will know where you want to set your anchor points. And it took me a little bit of time to like figure out where I'm going to want them. But I promise you, you'll pick it up quick and it comes to you. And I can do a whole tutorial explaining um, some little tips on knowing where to place them. And then I'm just going to select them by, um, I have A selected, I hit A on my keyboard. And then I just hold shift down and select a bunch of them. And I'm going to convert them to smooth anchor points. Oops, move this guy. Smooth. And now this looks awful, right? That looks nothing like the bunny ear, but I promise you it's going to come together. So I come up here. And so all these little points, let me first show you paths and anchor points. That might help explain it a little better. So when you have an SVG like this, what it actually, how the machine knows where to cut is paths and anchor points, right? So in here, there's all these little dots and every wool squares. <laughs> all these squares are where your blade knows to turn at. So every time there's a little square, the blade is making a turn, and then this red line is the path that it's following. Then it turns, and then follows, turns, follows. And these little circles coming off the lines from the squares are called handles. These handles control the anchor point. I think of them as magnets pulling on the line. So as you move the magnet, the path changes. So that's really how it works. Now, as you can imagine, when you take a raster image, which raster just means it's based off of pixels, little square pixels, um, when the auto converters like Cricut's auto converter or online auto converters that take PNG and JPEGs, which are raster, and turn them into vector, they have a lot of excess anchor points that just aren't needed. And this is because it's little squares around the edges, and it, especially if it's low res, it just... It'll never be as clean as doing it yourself, or at least very rarely, unless you have a super high res image that's very simple. But even if you have an intricate image or it's simple but low res, it's never going to be clean. And that's why you'll see people having their vinyl or cardstock tearing up and ripping because the blade is just moving way too much. I mean, I've seen traced images from auto converters that'll have like a straight path right here and they'll just be covered in anchor points like practically on top of each other literally on top of each other I mean there's no need for the blade to be turning that much but it's making these teensy tiny little movements one if you enlarge the image and you cut it really big you'll notice that you ever see a auto converted image and it has like a little dip or a little indent it's not exactly true to the original as you can see I placed minimal anchor points and now I'm going to take these handles and I'm going to start pulling them out to where I want them. Now, when you have something like this, an anchor point that's not on a corner, you want the two handles to line up. Because if I move just one of them and how I would do that is hold the alt key and drag, look what happens. It gets like a little nick. In Illustrator, is this cool tool where you can like kind of try to round it out. But I mean... And it places more anchor points for you. But I mean, it's not, still not the best, right? It's just not the best. But it's nice that it tries to help you. So I'm just going to hit Command Z to undo. And I'm just going to make sure that I keep them lined up. And I'm not going to hold Alt and move just one. So now I'm going to come down here. Bring this in a bit. Now here, 
this is going to be a 90 degree angle so i do want the handles to not move together so i'm going to hold alt and then click bring this i'm just going to get rid of it because i want it to be a clean 90 degree angle and again i'm going to hold alt and bring this one in and now it's nice and clean there but here is a little rounded just like i want it and then i'm going to zoom out and i'm just going to bring this one in come up here and again, I'm just going to go around this and I'm just going to work at it. Make my adjustments as I need. And you really do start to get the hang, <laughs> excuse me, the hang of it. it. Takes a little time, but before you know it, you're like a pro and you're whizzing through it. And I'm really still not whizzing through it, but... I promise it gets way better with time. Again, I'm just holding Alt and bringing those in so that they're not connected. And as you can see, I am almost finished here. Move this one out. I just go and I do any little tweaks I want to. Here, maybe I want this one in a little more. Now I'm gonna give this a fill. I'm gonna hit V on my keyboard, which lets me select everything. There's two little pointers. This black one is called the selection tool and you access it by hitting V on your keyboard or you can click here and that just lets you select things as a whole or you can hit A or click here for the white one and that when you select it selects direct points like the anchor points. So I'm going to hit V and I'm going to come over here to my fill. I'm going to give it, I don't really have light pink in my palette, that fill and uh, no stroke. And, and you can see that's pretty close to what I wanted. I could go in and tweak it a bit more, but for now, that's pretty good. Now, I'm going to do this flower really fast. I'm not going to walk through it, but I just want to show you that as you get better at it, how quick it starts to go. And then I'm going to show you the traced version and how much cleaner this is. Just holding shift while I select multiple points because I want to turn them all to smooth holding alt so I can move them separately so the handles don't move together and the really awesome thing with this is is that you can adjust anything. You ever have a font and there's just something that's bugging you about it? I had the issue today where the um, capital letter in the beginning of the word, or it was actually a name, it just, it, it didn't have like a connector to the, um, to the rest of the, oopsie, command Z is undo. It didn't, ha it didn't connect to the rest of it, right? And I wanted it to connect. So I literally just made it connect myself. Oh, I know what happened. I'm just going to come in and see. I know what I did. I have that happen once in a while. What I did was I hit Alt after I had already hit Alt once. So then it does this weird thing that drives me nuts, but. Once you've hit Alt once to tell a uh, anchor point that you want the handles to move separately, you don't want to hit Alt again. Hartnett likes to act all weirdo. Okay. And, and even I, I've been doing this for a while, and even I have times where I make little mistakes like I just did. Okay, and as you can see, I mean, that's pretty close. I can go in and tweak it a bit more, but it's pretty close. You can work through these shapes really fast. Now, why this is ideal over a trace, I'm going to go back to my... Oh, Misha, I would take out the center. 
I would just grab the circle. I mean, I could draw it with the pen tool, but the ellipse tool is a lot faster. This little tool here does multiple different kinds of shapes. The ellipse is the circle. I'm going to hold shift to make sure it's a perfect circle. Drag it out where I want it. Hit V. Bring it up to where I want it. And then I'm going to select this flower. Select the circle. And then I'm just going to hit this one right here, which is click to minus front. I call it the slice. It's like the slice in Cricut. And then... see that was my fault and then I have this beautiful flower this is from when I was hitting alt by accident earlier and I said it was messing up it does that if you've already hit alt on an anchor point to move one individually if you accidentally hit alt on the other handle it when you make the change in the handle it edits the path you're working on but it also leaves a that piece in the old way if that makes sense so I always forget that I've already hit alt and hit alt again and it does that, but it's no big deal. You just delete it at the end. So yeah, pretty great, right? Um, so if I was to go back and just trace it, right? Like with an auto converter, as you can see, this is adorable, but it's not super detailed, but it, it's pretty detailed and it's not very high res. You can see it's copy or watermarked. And when people watermark them, they're also smart enough to make sure they're posted in low res for their preview photos so that you cannot steal them without doing basically recreating it yourself um so what i would do is i would come to properties hit image trace and so i'll hit six colors and as you can see ugh, i can edit it down here in advance but it's just not the best right so what i can do is i'm gonna hit expand which just tells it that yes i want it and i'm gonna show you how if you add something like this how you could fix an illustrator right so i'm gonna hit click well i'm first i'm gonna ungroup it and then i'm gonna come in i'm gonna ungroup again because obviously a lot of it's grouped huh okay now we're good i'm gonna come in i'm gonna hit v on my keyboard click off hit v, close it there we go but as you can see while this is wonderful and what you can do is double click on the pencil tool and bring the smooth up which is what i've already done and you can just redraw things so if you have something in a font or an image you can come in and redraw it to what you want there's also a great tool I mean, i'm just gonna right click do i have my smooth tool right here called the smooth tool and you just draw over things and it smooths them out for you which is really great what's something that this is really i mean this isn't even savable well it is if you go in and edit the individual anchor points but that's not probably the best thing. here mm, I want something that's like super messy. Like, see right here. There's three anchor points. Really, I'd want to let me undo that. I'd hit the pencil tool. And I'd probably just redraw that out. Right? I mean, that's a little better. But if you... Oh, I have the perfect example. What is going on here? Who needs all these paths? Or anchor points? We don't. So what I'm going to do is hit this smooth tool and watch this. Look at that. It cleans it right up. All this excess blade movement. And this helps a lot when you're cutting a really tiny script font. Have you ever had a font that you really like, but you just wish it was thicker? You can just select it. Object, path, offset path. And I can offset it I can get a little preview B what size do I want and then I could just come in here and I mean whatever it is I want right I mean this isn't the best but I can go in with the pencil tool the smooth tool and edit it and what I would do now is select these little pieces I drew is there any more And then I would hit object and expand appearance. And that will add the path on the outside. Because you see how there's, oop, I missed one. You see those paths when it was just in the center? The Cricut would actually cut just that straight line. It wouldn't be cutting around it like we want. And then once I have all these, I'm just going to weld them. Boom. And now it's all part of the it off it's all part of the path 
But again, look how messy this font is. I mean, it's a beautiful font, but it needs to be smoothed out. And it's so wonderful how you can just do that. Or like, let's say you're like, oh, I don't know what's something somebody might want to change. Maybe they want the tail to come off more or be lower. You can do that. There's an erase tool, the brush tool, the pencil tool. You can do all that. I mean, I could come in here, select a V, then click, then hit end. And I could say, hey... I want this end to be bigger right here. It bugs me. And look, I just edited that. I mean, I can come up and clean that up. But there are so many wonderful things you can do in Illustrator. I mean, you do not want all these anchor points. I mean, if I was going to cut this, I would come in and really smooth this out. And you could use the Simplify tool, but it, whenever I've used Simplify, it totally changes the shape of everything. And I don't like it at all. And again, this smooth tool, you can double click and you can say if you want more accurate or more smooth. I'm going to bump it up. I mean, I could go on and on about the wonderful things you can do in Illustrator. Why I prefer Illustrator over Inkscape is the smooth tool, which I just showed you, and the pencil tool. Inkscape has a pencil tool, but instead of, see how this draw, redraws the path I already have? In Inkscape, it just draws a new path, so it draws a new line. And that's not really useful for the point of editing. And you can do these same premises with the bunny. If you don't want to use that pencil tool or the pen tool, like with the anchor points, come in and draw it. This is really messy, but. And then just go in and clean it up some more, you know? Or you can do it with the brush. But just remember with the brush, after you draw it out, I'm just going to close it here. Just hit V. Make sure you've selected all of it. Object, expand, expand appearance. And then, oh, I don't need to weld anything because it's already all, oh no, this one is not. If you ever can't find your weld tool, just go to window, pathfinder, bam. And now it is nice and welded. And I could come in with the pencil tool. Oh, let me select it, V, click, and I could be like, nope. V, click, and... And look at that. I mean, I could clean it up as much as I want to. I mean, that's not really my bunny ear, but you get the point here. Now, what I also wanted to show you is if you wanted this to be solid, because right now the Cricut's literally going to cut the outside line, and there's also an inside path. What you would do is you would hit A, select one of the anchor points, delete, delete, and now it's solid. So when you use the brush tool and you're trying to do something solid, just make sure you delete that inside. What I wanted to show you, though, about why tutorials on Illustrator that aren't for the Cricut might not always be the best to learn from. I mean, it's great to learn how to use the tools, but just keep in mind that this is the issue. When you're doing print or web, all that matters is how it looks on screen or how it prints out. They're not cutting, so it's it's a very different kind of thing. So let me just draw this line, right? And it's just a straight line. If the Cricut cut this, it would cut one single line. There would be no shape to it. But let me set the stroke to, first let me set a color. And then let me make it bigger. Now if you saw this on screen, you're going to be like, oh, it's going to cut me a rectangle. Great. It's not. All that matters to us is the, this path right here. Cricut's going to cut this path. And I've seen it happen to people. They're playing in Inkscape. They're playing in Illustrator. It looks great on screen. They go to cut it. It isn't cutting at all like what it looks like on screen. Always pay attention to your paths. That is what matters, this path. That's why I like to take my stroke and turn it off because it does not matter. Instead, I would add a fill. There's nothing to fill here, but that's what matters. Hopefully that explained what Illustrator can do for you. And if you want, I can do some tutorials that are more in depth on specific things and how to build your skill set up and like step by step because I know this was really fast and confusing. Well, I hope this video gave you a little more insight into Adobe Illustrator. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more of my videos, hit the subscribe button and hit that little bell to get notified whenever I post a new video. You can also check out my Facebook group, Cricut Design, SVG Tutorials, and Free Files. Happy crafting!